What's it going to take to make driverless trucks a reality? We've got some real-world insights today from a former trucking leader who's bringing his experience and knowledge of what it takes to run a truck in everyday operation to an autonomous truck developer. Kodiak Robotics recently named former USA Truck CEO James Reed as its new Chief Operating Officer. I'm Deborah Lockridge, Editor-in-Chief at Heavy Duty Trucking, and James joins me today on HGT Talks Trucking to talk about the move and the state of the autonomous truck industry. Before we start, a reminder to subscribe to HGT Talks Trucking on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. You can also catch each episode on our website, truckinginfo.com. So, James, it's good to have you on HGT Talks Trucking. Great, Deborah. It's great to be here. Thanks for the invite. So, what led you to join Kodiak after uh, USA Truck? What do you think your perspective brings to the company? Yeah, so those are uh, great questions that I guess get asked all the time, right? So uh, maybe the first thing, uh, you know, what brought me to Kodiak after being at USA Truck and prior to that after, you know, I was the CFO at Interstate prior to that. Um, you know, I, I have a whole career that existed before I was in transportation. I was in the technology business, spent you know 14 years in Silicon Valley. So always felt like I kind of had this tech perspective. Then I get into trucking a bit serendipitously, and that's a totally different story. But uh, but I fell in love with trucking, and I've loved it ever since. I love the drivers. I love the experience. I love the customers. I love everything about it. And so at USA Truck, you know, it was part of my job to assess future technologies, to understand what the implications might be to our business and to kind of contingency plan for that. And in the course of that, I met Kodiak and some of the other autonomous providers and, you know, went through a pretty rigorous assessment of the landscape to understand, you know, who might be a good partner for USA Truck. And over the course of time, Kodiak ended up being one of our suppliers. So Kodiak today moves freight or moved freight at USA Truck uh, when I was there uh, as as a capacity provider for us. So it was a great partnership. We felt that Kodiak had a lot to offer. Uh, we believed in autonomy. And ultimately, the reason I joined the company is when Don Burnett, the founder, called me and we talked about it, I kind of hemmed and hawed. And I thought one night, gosh, if you got a 100 smart people in the room and you didn't time bound the opportunity of autonomy and ask them, will we have autonomous vehicles on U.S. roadways? 100 out of 100 would answer yes. And so that was kind of the tipping point for me to, to go over. Now, the second part of your question of what uh, what can I offer? Or what do I bring from USA Truck? I just think I bring a real trucker's perspective. I mean, I've been in the trucking industry the last 13 years. I have been very vocal publicly as a driver advocate, as an advocate for the industry. And I think it's fair to say, it's hard to hear people say this about yourself, but I think it's fair to say that that I'm an expert in trucking and transportation. And so I think merging my skill set with Kodiak's aspirations is really an indication of the vision that Don and the leadership team have of not just delivering some pie in the sky technology, but delivering an ecosystem that's a solution for people. And I'm just delighted to be part of it. I think there you know, were some, some criticism and concerns, especially early on with some of the startups about, well, they may know tech, but they don't know anything about trucking. Um, so we're starting to see, I guess, a, a little bit more trucking uh, insights and expertise uh, joining the industry. Yeah. So you, you said that you talked to a lot of uh, companies. What is it about Kodiak that stood out to you from some of the other companies out there? It's interesting. As a person that's, you know, I'd call myself a hobby technologist. I was never a technologist when I was at Intel or EMC or T-Mobile. I was always a finance leader or a business leader. But being in that environment, you get a really good sense for what differentiates kind of winners and losers. And, you know, there's a path that a lot of people are taking in this space that that is around, you know, high density mapping. And, and maybe that's something we'll talk about later, but just, you know, for base understanding, it's the mapping of everything in a map in your area. And Kodiak took a fundamentally different approach to the marketplace. They have this really wonderful technology. And that was, you know, something that was really intriguing to me that they had a different approach. 
Uh, same thing with the way that their pod array is put together in or our pod array is put together in our mirror pods. It's a different go to market strategy. So as I was looking at potential partners and got this phone call from from Don and team, you know, the commercial viability of what I think is a more scalable hardware solution and a more scalable software solution than the alternatives, in my estimation, uh, made Kodiak the best place for me to play. I mean, effectively, I'm betting with my time and betting with my career that Kodiak is the play that's going to be the most commercially applicable in the space that I know and love so well. So I just mean, you know, commercial viability, what are some of the things that have to happen Um you know, in this industry to where we really see these see driverless trucks in major use. I think the challenges of autonomy, if you were to ask a lay person, which I still consider myself a bit of a lay person on the topic, you know, we would all think that, you know, getting the truck to drive down the road in the lane and to respond to external stimuli and all those things, those would be difficult. And of course they are. In, in order to create the software and the use case and the experience um, and the edge cases to be able to to safely drive the truck down the road. It, that's a hard engineering lift. But if we're going to use superlatives, the most challenging thing is the next thing. And the next thing for us is to validate the safety case. Kodiak has an aspiration to create through this effort, the safest driver on the road. And we're really serious about that. And I wish people, I could kind of open my heart and pour out to others' hearts what I see at Kodiak. I see people that are just kind of maniacally focused on making sure that safety is the first, foremost, and most important thing that we consider. And so the next step, the next challenge, the next opportunity really is validating the safety case, assembling the data that proves that we, at the very least, are, are as safe as and are aspirationally safer than a human driver in the truck. So that's the next thing is validating and proving the safety case. And we're all about it. And so speaking of safety, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration recently put out, uh, began a rulemaking, it's gathering information on how it should regulate level four, level five autonomous trucks. Um, I know some of these things uh, are about some things that Kodiak actually has been working on. Um, they're asking about motor carrier notification, uh, remote assistant oversight, how you handle inspections and maintenance. Any thoughts from you know Kodiak's perspective and as a you know, fleet guy about uh, what kind of things they're asking? Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I actually was reading it this morning to make sure I was kind of up on my facts. You know, I think it came out on February first, and it's a forty-five day, you know, proposed comment period. If you read into it, they also did this back in twenty nineteen, which I think just reflects. Uh, a focus of the FMCSA on on having meaningful dialogue with people and really enabling autonomy as a viable technology that works within the framework that exists. To me, I view this maybe not as a commitment, but certainly as a direction that they want to enable, they want to empower, they want to see autonomy, uh, you know, get 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 started. And so it's a really exciting time for us. I think if you go back and look at Kodiak's history, we've had a lot of history recently, uh, you know, working on the new inspection standards. Um, you know, we we've always we've always worked with the the police officers, the uh, you know, we have a, a member of our team who's a former a uh, captain in the C California Highway Patrol who is helping us lead the the conversation with you know state safety agencies police agencies we've been working with various state agencies and of course we've been very involved with the FMCSA and the CDSA in you know helping define these standards so to us it's a really exciting and necessary step to the next step in our progression i hear a lot of people comment on things like well sure it's it's one thing to have the truck going down the road and interstate but what happens if it breaks down? You know, how does how does it put out its triangles? How does, you know, it interact with a tow truck driver or, or a repair? And then, you know, what if there's a law enforcement? So it seems like you know, there's a lot of questions about sort of how autonomous trucks are going to function in that real world setting uh, beyond just driving down the road. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And I think this is again another spot where Kodiak kind of leads the way. So the 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 proof is in the pudding, but 
in my coming over to the organization, the organization expressing interest in in me coming here, I think reflects a foreshadowings maybe a negative word, but a a forward look, a forecast of the need to understand the complexities of of trucking over the road. And so that's really my job. My job is to understand end to end from kind of the beginning to the end, what it takes to get a truck on the road, to operate a truck safely, and to ultimately deliver freight safely and on time. And some of the things you talk about are absolute considerations. Uh, There are a whole bunch of other things that people talk about, uh, you know, not just over the road, but, you know, we've talked to potential customers who ask, well, who's going to service the equipment? Who's going to have the inventory to repair Uh, the pods and things like this. And so we're just thinking through the whole matrix of possibilities, including uh, safety markers, including slowing down and pulling over to the side of the road and all the things that, that any trucker needs to know they're all on our roadmap and we're working through each and every one of them. So um, there's recently been some efforts in California. uh, I think it was a bill announced to essentially ban fully autonomous vehicles. Um, I know organized labor uh, is got concerns, I guess, about self-driving trucks. Um, and they quoted, LA Times quoted a Teamsters driver who told a story, what happened to him, he had a passenger car get wedged beneath his trailer and said, uh, he knew what to do. He knew not to slam on the brakes. He you know, made his way to the side of the road, drove next to some bushes that dislodged the car. Um, and he said, well, you can't program that into a computer. So can you program something like that into an autonomous truck? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, let me say, you know, God bless that driver for what he did. That was heroic. And, you know, it sounds like it saved a life or or more than one life. And so, you know, always appreciative of our professional drivers in the industry who who do that kind of stuff every day. Uh, What a great story that is. One of the things that we need to understand is the difference between kind of instinct and impulse. And, you know, instinct is very difficult to describe logically. And I don't know if you've ever driven a truck. You mentioned that you had a father-in-law in the industry uh, when we were talking before the show. Um, I have driven semi trucks and I will tell you, I was not born with the instinct to know how to drive and maneuver uh, the trucks. But there's also this thing called impulse. And impulse is more of a response to a stimuli. It's not instinctive at all. It's quite logical about what should be done in different circumstances. And and so you really can. You you can program impulses into uh, trucking situations. And I'll just give you a great example. If you go out and, and look at the Kodiak website or any of the Kodiak social media or search on YouTube, you can find a video where we tested a tire blowout in a truck. This is a real, and I I hate to say it's not staged because it is staged, right? We've got a real truck with our real operating parameters on a test track where we intentionally blew out the front tire on this truck. And as as the tire blows out, we wanted to prove that the impulse of that external stimuli could be handled by our technology and the truck stays perfectly centered on the lane. I think it veers five or six centimeters from center but to the human eye it looks like it doesn't move at all and for anyone that's in the trucking business like me uh, or other ceos or operators or drivers you know i was at a conference this week and i told this story and showed this video repeatedly to a number of trucking executives and unfortunately every one of us who has run a fleet has had the experience of a front left tire blowout resulting in a truck losing control flipping and in sometimes having some pretty severe consequences. And so um, that's just an example of how the tech is actually better because it responds more quickly, more consistently, and more predictably to external stimuli than even we can do as humans. So uh, as much as I recognize and commend the hero, the, the, the heroic actions that were taken by that driver, we think in situations where external forces and stimuli are pushed, we can absolutely uh, design in uh, impulse control that will help us uh, mitigate those situations. And some of the teamsters, of course, are concerned about about jobs. And that's been, I mean, you know, a couple of years ago, there were big articles, national press, you know, all, how many truck driver jobs were going to be lost because of self-driving trucks. And with your trucking background, um, what are your thoughts on that issue? I will tell you, it was an initial concern of mine too, when I first thought about going to work with Kodiak. And so I did decide, I decided to do my homework 
And, you know, before I go any further, I, I, I'm I sure there are drivers that have been on my team that consider themselves part of my family. I used to give out my cell phone number to every driver. I love them. They're yeah. part of my uh, of my team and I, they will always be part of my team. So I, I come from a, a, a spot of having genuine care and concern uh, for the driving community. There's a lot of data out there that suggests there's actually little to no uh, ramifications to driver jobs. You know, Bob Costello, who we all know and love, is a great friend of mine and the chief economist for the ATA, publishes a report each year where he highlights the driver shortage. I think right now, his latest data said we're about an 80,000 driver shortage. And he sees that number accelerating, you know, through 2030 and beyond. I think by 2030, he has us at like 165,000 or something, something like that. And so as that problem uh, the driver shortage exacerbates itself. We've got to find practical solutions for that. And autonomy is one of those solutions. Further to the point, I believe about two years ago, it was January of 2021, the DOT, uh, the federal DOT, did a, a really interesting study weighing and estimating the impacts of autonomous vehicles, commercial motor vehicles, autonomous commercial motor vehicles on the motoring public, on the economy in general, and also on drivers. And in no what I would call practical scenario, did they see any downside to drivers? Now, they do have one scenario where they assume 10 years post-launch, 75% of trucks are autonomous commercial motor vehicles. And even in that very unlikely scenario, they have less than 2% of drivers being affected. And the reason for that is autonomy has great promises, especially where we're focusing in the middle mile to, to even out the supply chain, reduce peaks and in, in improve valleys steady state the supply chain such that more of the activity goes to the starting point and the end point of transportation. Translation, that means more jobs that are the type and variety that drivers like. Local jobs, home nightly, where they can be with their families or their friends or their hobbies or as I tease drivers, I don't care if your family's your priority, your cat or your Harley Davidson. Our job is to give them opportunities to live lives where they can focus on the things that matter to them. And we think autonomy contributes to that in meaningful ways. So what's on tap for Kodiak and the autonomous trucking industry this year? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. You know, most of us are kind of in the same spot uh, from a development standpoint. So you'll see, hear a lot of autonomous providers talk about being feature complete in 2023, and that's a goal that we have. The next thing then for us is we expect in 2023 to roll out what we believe will be the first commercially operable uh, truck port. So that, that's coming soon. Nothing to announce here today, but it will be happening relatively soon. And finally, we expect to deepen our relationships with our customers. All these issues you asked me about earlier, understanding the intricacies and implications of really running trucking in an autonomous mode, creating that, that ecosystem and that environment, that's a priority for us. But beyond that, as you get to the second half of this year and into 2024, it all becomes about the safety case. So we will continue to do the stimulations that we do. We will continue to do the on-road testing and our full focus becomes on the safety case because as I said earlier, it's our goal to deliver the safest driver on the road. All right, well, James, that's all the time we've got today. Thanks for joining us on HGT Talks Trucking. Uh, again, that was James Reed. He's the new COO at Kodiak Robotics. And thanks for tuning in.